Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infra meeting. So before we jump on the few topics that I would like to introduce, we just have a few announcements uh, coming in the week. So the first one is tomorrow with Garrett and Damien, we are going to do a cluster upgrade. Um, we, we, we documented the procedure to upgrade a cluster, um, the Kubernetes cluster. Feel free to review. So I put the link to the notes. Feel free to review that document. Um, we don't expect um, any issues for this upgrade, um, but we would like to formalize the way we do the upgrade for the coming um, version, basically. So that's a that's a perfect time to, to improve the process and we'll apply the same process for the next uh, version. We still have few version to, to upgrade, like right now we'll jump to the version 1.18 um, and we'll probably go to the version 1.19, 20, and then 21. So yeah, stay tuned. The second uh, announcement um, on Thursday, we're going to do a Jira upgrade. Um, there is a link to the maintenance window. So basically the Linux foundation will update Jira and then we'll have to restart um, the, the service. We should not have a downtime bigger than 20 minutes, but yeah, just, just assume that it's done for one hour and if something goes wrong, feel free to look at status.jenkins.io as it will be the place where we update um, as we provide a news. And finally, the third announcement, which is um, the Jenkins weekly release to the 288 has been released today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that, but considering um, the challenges that we faced last week, I'm really happy that um, we could um, release the Jenkins with the, the latest weekly without any issues. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about that later on. Um, any question before I continue? Sounds great. Yes. So today I would like to share something um, new. So I've been experimenting a little bit with a new workflow to take notes and to publish notes. So the current challenge that we have right now is we are using Google Notes um, and I've been wondering a way to directly um, have those notes published on the Jenkins that website or on the infrastructure website. So I've been play playing a little bit with Acme. So I'm going to do a quick demo here. Um, so inside Acme, we can specify who has access to the notes. So obviously everybody will be able to read the notes, but we would like to only have the infrastructure team to edit the notes. Um, so if you are interested to participate and to take notes with us, feel free to ask and I'll add you to the, um, to the team. Um, the purpose is, is just to avoid spammers. Um, so that's why we don't want to allow everybody to write, but I mean, yeah, if, if you're interested, feel free to join. Um, so we now have few documents. So I just started, um, yeah, we did, did some experiments. I just started the meeting notes here. So this is the one I was showing you here. So there are multiple views. Um, it's loading. So you either have the view to visualize the notes that we are taking at the moment. Um, you can have a, just the edit view. And in this case, you have the combined view. So you can edit the documents and then it automatically show on the right side. Um, to me, the most important one, the most important thing here is you can directly um, push um, to Git repositories. So in this case, um, you can to button pull from GitHub or push. Um, I'm not expecting to use the pull then in a way because we are not supposed to, I mean, we will just push a command once. Um, and we are not supposed to modify them elsewhere, but anyway. So if we want to push documents, we can just select the Git repository. So in this case, it's just um, an experiment. So I'm using the documentation Git repository. I just select the, the branch, um, the file that I want to create. So either I select an existing one or I can just create a new one like meetings um, slash we are 2021. 20, Let's Keep the months first, 0, 04 and 13. Markdown. I'm going to create this file. Create a new meeting notes. Push. And so the file will be available um, soon, syncing. And so now the file is available on the Git repository. It's loading. Yes, meeting here. So the purpose here is just to improve the visibility. Um, so I'm envisioning to put that under the Jenkins.io 
Git repository. But yeah, as long as um, I don't control the process um, totally, um, I prefer to experiment in, in this Git repository. And then, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's all I want to share. Um, any question until now? So starting from now, what I'll probably do is I will just export the existing nodes um, and put them inside the Git repository. So we have everything in one place. Um, so I'll probably reuse the same workflow next week. Um, so if you don't have any questions, I'm going to move to the next topic. Um, um, yes, sorry. For some reason, I don't have the video enabled. Yeah, never mind. I'll see that later. So Garrett um, and I identify a few issues regarding the update center. So updates at Jenkins.io and on the Mirror website, get the Jenkins.io. Um, we both, I, so Garrett identify issues because he's currently working on a way to automate Jenkins Docker images um, that include the plugins. And he already he regularly faces uh, issues where um, we can't download the latest plugin. Um, so he came to me to see if we could identify a way to fix that. And at the same time, what I, I what I noticed is on Mirror Brain, so the place where we download the plugins, um, it takes a huge time to build the, the list of mirrors and uh, mirror bits takes like several hours to build that list, which means that um, sometimes first for the first hours, you are redirected to the fallback service, which should, shouldn't be used as a fallback for few hours, maybe like just the time to sync the first mirror. But I, I was more expecting like 30 minutes maximum when I put that service in place. Um, and then what I noticed is we usually have the traffic redirected to China for a few hours before um, we officially use every mirrors. The thing is, the way mirror bits work is it builds um, a checksum for the files. And so for some reason, only the, only the mirror from China has the correct file with the correct checksum. Um, but the thing is, if I manually trigger a scan, it works immediately. So there is definitely something fishy, weird happening, um, either on the container side um, that we have to investigate. Um, Garrett was maybe suggesting that um, we have some issues with the proxy um, that requests are not correctly forwarded to mirror bits. But yeah, we, de we definitely need something that we have to improve. Um, and it's not something that just affects the Jenkins project. It's something that affects every Jenkins instances. It's just that we are now facing the issues as well because we, we regularly build instances with the right plugin version. Um, so if someone is interested to, 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 deep, to, to dig into that, um, I would be really happy to work with that person. Otherwise, yeah, just, I, I just have to find some time to work on that. Any question? Nope, sounds good. So let's continue. Um, we are currently working on a Jenkins.io website. So the continuous delivery workflow for Jenkins.io website. So just to bring some context and the uh, reason why we are working on that at the moment, um, we realized that because of the current implementation, we always push files on a, on a, um, on a, on a network storage. And the thing is, because we always push file, we don't necessarily clean the file. And so we regularly face a situation where we have either outdated our files that should not be there anymore. And so we, we have, I mean, we have weird errors. Um, so Kevin came to me to see if we could file an, um, a solution uh, to redesign the way the website was deployed, which is something that we put in place like for uh, four years ago. Um, and at the same time with update CLI, uh, we have an easy way to define, um, we have an easy way to, to, to build um, and to publish um, the container on a different Git repository. And so the idea was to change a few things. Uh, first, we don't build the Jenkins study website from Trusted anymore because it does not have web hooks. So we just trigger, um, we just, from trusted.ci, we build the website like every 30 minutes, which means that um, we build it way too often. And so the idea is we move the, we will build the Docker image from infra.ci. Um, once um, the image, the Docker image is built, we publish that on Docker Hub. And once that Docker Hub 
um, that what's that image is published on the Hub. We bump um, the Docker, the ham charts used to deploy the Jenkins LIA website. Um, we had discussion about either using uh, the network storage or just use uh, ham charts. My preference was to use a Jenkins ham, um, a ham chart because it's just more portable. Um, we can redeploy that that website everywhere um, as long as we have um, a Kubernetes API. Um, so right now we are waiting for one last component, um, which Damien has been working on, which is including updates in the shard library. Um, once it's done, um, we'll off officially switch um, the workflow. And if it's successfully, we'll may probably apply the same new pattern for other websites like Javadoc and other uh, static um, websites. Um, Kevin was interested to do the same for the plugin site API. So depending how easy it is, um, oh yeah, it's, it's still an, ex um, an exploratory mode. So yeah. Just, the... I just have one question. Um, is there a process today or if it's not, did you discuss, maybe the answer is no, um, about previsualizing a change when a contributor is opening a pull request. Let's say I'm going on the Jenkins IO, I see something I want to contribute. I scroll down, I click the improve the page, it opened the GitHub web editor. I change what I want to contribute, click commit, which result on opening a pull request still on the web UI. And then we have the build that does its stuff. Is there a process that at the moment in time add a GitHub checks or a link in the pull request messages that allows me to previsualize the change? Which means now as a maintainer, I have a pull request. I want I can check the source, but I also need to check the render. Does it break the spaces? Is it breaking the large uh, code block or something like this? Um, so we have, we discussed about that with Kevin. Um, this is something that we would like to have. Um, we just we just agreed that the first step was to stop using the Azure file storage, and once we have a new another workflow, we would be implementing that. Um, there are different ways to do that, um, and this is definitely something that would interest us. The 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 only thing that you have to keep in mind here is. So we have two opportunities. Either we, we we deploy that on a Kubernetes cluster, and you did a great job to deploy CI Kubernetes. So we now have a Kubernetes cluster that could be only used for CI environments. Um, so that would be one option um, to use it. Because I don't because the thing is the Jenkins that your website is still built from CI.jenkins.io, which means that um, it's an untrust, a not trusted environment. And so I would either use a new cluster that you just recently deploy. Um, otherwise, there were some discussion to use um, a service like um, just for the PR process, like Netlify or search.sh or something else. But um, on, a, on a regular basis, I'm usually not confident to rely on third services because um, Either you decide to rely on the free tier, but then you put in place scripts and you automate things and you rely on a service that you're not paying for. And so the day that service decide to charge you for whatever, um, then it means that we have to, to change the workflow. So you just delay the work, um, Imo. Um, so I would definitely prefer to, to rely on a community solution that we can easily uh, move between cloud vendors. Uh, yeah. The... The cost of having such service for previsualizing is really high, especially given the build time. Using Netlify only for the pull request for previsualization could be an intermediate, in particular because Netlify provides Docker images. So you can yeah. reproduce what Netlify is doing because all their internal Docker images are available by default. So basically, Which... so this is something that Gavin has been pushing for quite a long time and I've been pushing back because of the time I spent in pinning and uh, configuring the different accounts. Um, so we may be using it for the pull request. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, that could be an intermediate. It, it might not be mandatory. The goal here I want to underline is how to help a contributor and a maintainer 
who is not part of the infrastructure team to have a better experience when they want to contribute. In particular, the documentation is a critical point for the project. So it's uh, from my experience, being able to previsualize something else than the code is really, really important when you get starters or people who don't have a lot of time to contribute on. That's a sensitive point. Still, I agree on the not relying on Netlify for the production website. But even if there is a diff between the previsualization and the production, still you have previsualization and it is critical. Yes, and I just realized that I was showing on the wrong video. So you, you, you didn't see my screen, in fact, when I was showing how I think was working. So I, I, I was in an old um, angle session. And so I was sharing that old angle session where I was alone. And so apparently you didn't saw my presentation, my demo about the um, documentation um, and the way we take notes. No, we, we did. Actually, oh, I think we did. Yeah, yeah, actually, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay, perfect then. Okay. So I thought, okay, then, that, that's, then that's great. So back to, back to Damien's point, preview environments feel brilliant to me as a way to reduce onboarding for contributors. I know we wrestled terribly with Google Season of Docs contributor onboarding uh, because our writer had real difficulty getting the, the Jenkins.io site to build for her on her local Windows computer. So yep. I like the idea very much. So uh, the thing is, being able to just build the Docker image right now um, will already simplify that process. Um, because no, right now, if you go to Jenkins, that's the easiest part. The rest is complicated, meaning creating a subdomain, adding the root on whatever proxy, even if it's automated, ensuring but that it's garbage the, the, collected. That's the worst point. These so are the, 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 things that are technical, feasible, but really time consuming. Yeah, that, I mean, that that's the kind of thing that can be yeah, automated anyway, so. I've, honestly, but, if you can point me to someone who did that correctly, including garbage collecting on something else than a public service like Netlify, I will, I will pay a restaurant to you, Olivier, because I've, it's been a decade that everyone wants to do yeah, that, but I've never seen Jen, something Jen, Jen. work. Jen Jenkins X Jenkins X does that. Um, and it has been and it's it has been working for years. Mm -hmm. So I mean there are, there are solutions that works. And so the thing is with a Kubernetes cluster, you can define um, for the domain, uh, you just have to, to, to configure a domain. Let's say you consider that uh, pr.ci.jenkins.io is redirected to website built from ci.jenkins.io. And then you can use the PR name um, in the, the domain, you'll get HTTPS by default. I mean, there are solutions to implement that. Um, I never said it's impossible. I said it's time consuming. That's why I want a solution which is not time consuming compared to the effort of only the previsualization of PR on Netlify. But that's uh, okay. That will be another subject. I, uh, Jenkins 6 is doing this quite nicely, but that means that we mean to install a Jenkins 6 instance and maintain it. I don't say it's impossible or it's a lot. I just say it's time. And I will prefer having your brain and Garrett's brain uh, dedicated on being more valuable than previsualizing a static website. Um, the, the website is, yeah, let me just did some name. Um, the thing that Kevin was suggesting. Um, oops, was, hello. So there is something uh, interesting with um, Acme is that you can support Vim, but for some reason it removed that configuration. So I was just typing the wrong comment. Um, so let's get back to use Vim inside Acme. Um, search. Let's search this way. Okay, Sage. Sorry. Um, and yes, the, la the last topic that I would like to mention before we finish the meeting is we did the last, last week, we had the security release 
which was really cumbersome uh, on many ways. First, the release process and obviously the packaging process. Um, we faced many WebSocket timeout issues, TCP timeout issues. Uh, for those, we were able to fix them by switching from the TCP um, from the Jenkins tunnel to use WebSockets. Um, so this drastically reduced the problem. But we face another issue, which is by default, we were all we are always installing the latest plugins version available for a version for a Jenkins version that we have. And the latest SSH agent plugin broke um, the SSH agent connection on Windows machines. So we had to specify uh, a plugin version, which was the previous plugin version, in order to finalize the Windows packaging. Um, the thing is, all those issues took me quite some time to identify, to fix, and to implement workarounds. Um, Garrett helped me a lot in the process, so we were able to, 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 to deliver the security release. Um, but yeah, that, that was painful. The, 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 we, I sent an email um, to resume the situation. I think the, the, the most urgent thing that you have to identify right now is um, to remove the, the specific version that we are using for the SSH agent plugin. So either there is something that needs to be improved on the, either there is an issue on the plugin that we have to fix or we have to improve um, our scripts um, that use the plugin but um, we cannot stay for forever with that specific plugin version. So we have to identify a solution right now. That's actually functionality that's not available in the um, plugin installation manager. So it, it only works because it's using the UC command to do that, to pin that update. Ah, oh, okay. So, so we couldn't use the minus minus last Faults, or no minus minus latest faults. It's the it's the updating. So it's not so much the installing of the plugin. It's the updating of the plugin's text file. So uh -oh. um so it's so actually for these images we're using GitHub Actions uh, running once um, well, every fifteen minutes or so that look for new plugins. If they are, then it creates creates pull requests to the right um, repo. Um, and it uses a tool called UC, which is just a very small binary that runs as a GitHub action to do this. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the ability to pin um, the plugin information, a, a particular one, and avoid an update if you want. Um, so if you want to look at um, the work that um, Garrett did recently, so we have a Git repository named docker-jenkins-lts. There you obviously have the Docker file, which is pretty simple. We just bump the version on a regular basis. And we also have the plugins.txt. Uh, so we specify the version. So we are using the tool made by Garrett, which is um, UC. And so you can specify- if you, at, if you have a look at line 81 there, uh, yeah. Into this one. Yeah. So you specify a command to send a update. And in this case, we want, so the tool, you see, we never update this plugin anymore. Um, and so the process, I don't know if we can look at it for, from the Jenkins. So we have the CST, we just specify um, some tests. And I'm not sure if it's clear here. It's, no, it's, it's not. It's all, in the, it, it's all in the GitHub folder. Yeah, the .github slash workflow, right? Yeah. So there is one workflow that fetched the latest uh, Jenkins version. Yeah. Um, and so we try, and then we happen at test Jenkins. So basically, we rely on yeah the, um, the Jenkins Docker image that we build and publish for the project on the version GDK 11. And so this one fetched the latest um, Jenkins version. And then you have another one, which is just updating uh, the plugins. Is it the one? Yeah. Garrett, you see here. Yeah, so it, it, it will, it kind of skips that if there are no updates. Um, and so sorry, there is an image, sorry. It, it skips what, Gareth? I'm not sure I understood that. Sorry, it, 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 so when, when the UC command runs by default, it will try and, it tries to locate a plugins text file in the local directory. And mm -hmm. it will try to write to that by default as well. Ah. Okay. So, so that, that um, Peter something or other, was it Peter Evans? Yeah, should, should remember this, should remember his name really. Um, when that runs, it will create a pull request if there are local changes. 
Got it. So what happens here is UC runs and optionally updates plugins.txt and then the last stage there that create pull request, or the last step there, submits a pull request of that changed file. Yeah, so if you have a look at the if you have a look at the actions tab there, you'll see um, you'll see yeah, that running yeah. every fifteen minutes or so ish. But it only creates a pull request when there are updated plugins. And so the the, the, pro, the process is from here uh, we are building uh, either for the Jenkins cell test and we have another key repository for the weekly. So we build we open PRs. Um, if I go here closed. Open. You can see that we just update plugins. And so if you look at just one, um, you can see that the file was just changed for a specific version. So we just bump um, plugins for the specific version. And then from um, the GitHub charts from here, we use update CLI here, pum, 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 Jenkins and this, and from here, we just say um, return the latest GitHub release uh, from the Git repository Jenkins infra slash Docker Jenkins LTS. Um, we want to test that um, there is an image which contain. So in this case, we test that there is an image published on Docker Hub, which named Jenkins CI infra slash Jenkins dash LTS with a tag matching the GitHub release that was returned from the first component. And then we update um, the configuration config default Jenkins release with the new tag. So what we test is we test that the Docker image tag has been published and then we can safely update the open a PR in this GitHub repository. And so then you arrive on the pull requests and from here you have um, like this one but Jenkins with Jenkins weekly version. And so we have a PR and we can see the file that was changed. And so those are using custom tags um, from the Docker image because um, we want to know what Jenkins version is used for this inside this image and how many time we bump the plugin. So we are using semantic versioning. On that. So I'm actually on that one because that is a Jenkins version. I'm actually bumping the feature branch mm. so or the feature tag. So that's that's what I've been trying to fix uh, the Jake's release version this week. Um, okay, so so and that was an important piece. So that the minor the minor number incremented because the Jenkins version incremented. Yeah, and then but, we're appending the Jenkins version as um, pre-release information. Um, into into the so so it's still a valid semantic version. It's just pre-release. So I would I'd like to do it. I, I would have preferred to do it as build metadata with a with the plus symbol, but that you can't do that with um, Docker images. You can't use the name. So we we had a number of workarounds around that. Okay. So yeah, I just want to underline that really cool job. Because right now, it forced us to feel what our end users are feeling by building quite often, almost every day, an image and downloading the plugins. We started to see issues that are most of the time hard to reproduce because you try it, it works on your machine one, twice, okay, it's really hard here. We start to see the same problems. So that's not only it helps us and facilitate a lot of our tasks. So that's a great job. And also it improves and fosters the empathy. So I really think it's a really good uh, foundation that you did. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm Olivier, I am a little concerned about the WebSocket timeout. Have we had any further discussions with Jesse Glick or others about the, the root of that thing? So not yet. Um, we want to update the Kubernetes cluster um, first um, to see if, I mean, there are any network issues or load, whatever. And then we will we'll investigate a little, bit, a little bit more. There are okay, two good. main steps here um, uh, that have been pointed by, uh, by James and, uh, and Jesse when I asked them for help a few weeks ago on the Infra CI instance. Um, so they pointed out there are uh, the cloud bees support article, which is on the Jira issue that propose different solution that are most of the time kind of the optimization. Um, but still we should be able to measure 
And also, we should be aware that we are using old Kubernetes version on AKS. And it's hard to be sure that the problem does not come from the control plane of AKS and not from Jenkins. <gasps> so that's why we need to upgrade to a recent version and to put in place some measurement, maybe using GMX on the GVM or exporting the amount, because it looks like we were not using a lot of Kubernetes uh, client inside GVM. As Olivier said, uh, the changes that Garrett and he applied to release last week drastically improved the situation, even though they might have some time to time some web sockets. So we have to track this down. Now it's not blocking. We improved a lot. So let's see when will be the next time. What, 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 I find, what I find weird with this issue is, for instance, Inflated CI has been running since almost a year now. Um, and we only start seeing those timeout issues in the past few weeks. Um, and last week, it was really problematic. It's time we trigger a jump. The job was failing. Um, since uh, Azure announced a deprecation of the version 1.17, um, yeah, we are just assuming that it's better to just move to new world communities version before spending your time to understand what's there. Um, and so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, before I finish this meeting, um, I, I, I would be interested for, for, for feedback. Um, until today, we maintain a really huge uh, Google Doc with all the notes that we've been uh, taking um, every week. Um, we have like something like 19, uh, 90, 90 pages of notes. And I'm just wondering if we should, if we, if we use like me and, and we push those on a Git repository, is it better to, to have one big markdown file or is it better to have one um, markdown file per meeting? So that's the only thing that I'm wondering right now. Um, so if you have any feedback on that, I would be glad to, to hear about them. So for me, markdown file per meeting with okay. date stamp date stamp in the file name is is easier for me to deal with um github we, still and, has good search facilities and google certainly has good search facilities to find the right file okay okay that's that sounds great and also we can have a template for the meeting so we could i mean i can yeah put in place that um thanks and finally, and the last question, is there any opinion to, to publish the meeting notes on the Jenkins.io website, or should we maintain another website for the Jenkins Infra project with the documentation and so on? How will, how will this work with the Jenkins.io pull request based website, pull request based workflow? Would this then be directly injecting without a pull request? So I guess yes. Otherwise, someone yes. That's my that's my guess. Um, because obviously, in the end, it's just a configuration. Um, another option would be to create a temporary branch and create a PR. But I think it does not bring any value uh, for that to have a pull request workflow. So if if someone were to commit, there there are cases where jenkins.io can be broken by bad commits usually they're data related breaks where if i break a yaml file i can damage the whole site um my initial thought was not to put this on jenkins.io but put it somewhere else but i'm i'm open to the other it's just jenkins.io right now is hundreds of megabytes of of data around the project hesitant to add more there but open to suggestions Okay, I mean, for the time being, I can just use the documentation um, Git repository, uh, and send, and if I, at some point we decide to 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 improve the process, maybe we we'll just maybe we we'll move to Jenkins.io or somewhere else at that time. But yeah, guess uh, for the time being, I will just uh, populate the documentation Git repository. Thanks for your time. Um, have a great day, and um, see you later. Bye bye. See ya.